So, Tekken 8 has been out for a couple of months now, and I've had more time in this game already than I want to openly admit before the court of public opinion that is the internet. And already it has been a crazy roller coaster ride. Originally released to almost universal acclaim, the game reviewed extremely well, and even the slathering fickle horde of the fighting game community and casual audiences alike sung its praises. After a fairly turbulent time in both the fighting game landscape and very controversial events surrounding both Street Fighter 6 and Mortal Kombat 1 and gaming as a whole. Yet, in contrast, everyone seemed absolutely enchanted by Tekken 8's release and all was well in the forever changing tides of gaming favour. For a time. Fighting games since falling from grace of the now cliched triple A status they once held in the industry's formulative years, a time where almost everyone who owned a PlayStation 1 had a copy of Tekken 3, eventually fell out of mainstream gaming popularity when multiplayer online as a whole took over and arcades became a thing of the past while fighting games for certain technological reasons fell behind and since have struggled with niche audiences and the occasional bursts of mainstream and casual attention. Remember, we are talking about a genre of games which not only function at the extreme ends of human dexterity, perception and hand-eye coordination when it comes to anything outside the real world, where not only are techniques sometimes counted and executed to the precision of a millisecond or the exact frame of animation, and that both participants must see this exact same frame of animation happening on their monitor as the person that they may be potentially playing on the other side of the world with. A requirement that was absolutely necessary for the games to function online to any respectable level, and for such a long time it seemed like a veritable impossibility. Then finally, with the advent of the GGPO technology which utilized a prediction and rollback save state algorithm, fighting games all of a sudden were playable online and it felt like black magic. A technology that was frustratingly made open source by its creators, the Cannon Brothers, while almost all of the major fighting game developers went on pretending it didn't exist, with their dreadfully traditional and archaic variable input delay based netcode much to everyone's frustration. Well, everyone who knew what they were talking about, at least. Eventually. The AAA industry finally caught up after a couple of embarrassing attempts by Capcom, looking at you especially Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and everything finally came to a head when the world was enveloped by a global plague and each of our respective governments' responses making it vital fighting games to have a real solution other than relying on offline tournaments to keep the competitive scene alive. But I digress. At the end of the day, we are finally, and some might say, a golden age of fighting games that paradoxically also occurs while the gaming industry as a whole meets some very uncomfortable challenges under the shackles of ever-increasing development costs, brain drain, and cultural war. All under the stewardship of big corporate money and greed. Now, features such as actual functioning online netcode to more or a lesser degree, often taken for granted by gamers who don't play fighters, and crossplay between all platforms, another war that we fought on the front line. A feature that may be considered a nice to have in other genres of games, but absolutely vital for fighters who often have a niche gaming audience much smaller than other types of genres due to their respective challenges in, in gaming perception. They are one versus one games after all, being split across multiple platforms. And it seems after Tekken 7, which had an infamously low budget while saving the series from being cancelled, and famously selling more than any other installment in the franchise's 30 year plus history. Tekken 8 spearheaded this new generation of fighters with in some cases revolutionary features in AI and training tools along with an NRS style full blown story campaign playing out like some sort of shonen anime replete with show intro 
uh, online rollback and a recorded input delay by Digital Foundry and Noodles being one of the lowest ever in record, all presented in a beautiful package running on Unreal 5 with all the features we used to take for granted in the fighting game heyday. So I might as well make this video a bit of a review to correctly contextualize the situation we now find ourselves in. Unlike the vast majority of popular content creators' channels that are not in the fighting game community, which just all seem to read uninformed articles to make content over. Now, I originally intended this video to be much sooner, but that little evil devil gene possessing entity on my shoulder whispered in my ear constantly, Hold, hold, and so I held. And here we are. But first, What's good? First off, the production values of the chain for a fighting game. It is, I think, the first fighter on Unreal 5, and uh, maybe the first truly triple A fighting game in recent years, um, from Namco at least. A single player long form NRS style cinematic story mode with two endings and no expense spared. I would actually go out of my way and say they topped NRS in this regard because. It's just the right length and doesn't outstay its welcome, as well as having some interesting counterplay with like the um, the tournament mode inside the actual story mode and the Tekken Force embedded into it. Although it's maybe not really a Tekken Force, it feels more like one of those, Mo what they call it, Moso games, like Dynasty Warriors. Feels a bit more like that. I really wish they would put in that, by the way, like a proper Tekken Force that's like the Tekken 3 one, which functions more like a side-scrolling beat-em-up, but you have the um, characters function exactly how they do in the normal game. It was actually a really inspired idea for beat-em-ups, and I really would like to see a better long-form version of that. And it has uh, character episodes with key rival battles and full CGI endings for all the base 32 characters. Arcade Quest, which acts as a tutorial and adequately introduces the battle system to new players. Standard two-player versus modes, including CPU versus CPU. Tekken Ball, a casual favorite from Tekken 3, reimagined for Tekken 8 for the first time on all platforms of online play. I'm actually yet to play this. It is online play, but I have never. I was not really interested in it, and by the time I'd moved on to try out to get my achievements, which I don't really care for either, um, I noticed I can't find a match with it on anymore. So that's the problem with these casual modes everyone cries for. They just don't get pl much play after people get over the nostalgia of it. Tekken Ball was the same. Tek sorry, Tekken Bowling was the same. I just, I don't know. I find matches very easily in this game, but Tekken Ball, impossible. The game also features a full arcade battle um, mode with eight fights and various boss fights unlocked if you fulfill special conditions. Super Ghost Mode with AI that you can train with full leaderboard support so you can find all the best players and download their Ghost AI to tra train against and also customize the mod with your own tailored list of opponents. Now, although flawed, it's still better than fighting against the CPU which has traditionally really done nothing but make you worse at the game in my opinion. I think there's some problems with it at the moment. I noticed my ghost was really good at some point and then I went back a few days later and it seems like all the data had been forgotten. Um, there's also, so hopefully they can fix that. There's also been some murmuring like people complaining about it not being the same as treasure battle and not as good. I agree at some points but the main flaws of it, the mode, I think, is it doesn't cycle through the stages. So you have to choose your stage that you want to play. And if you want to change it, you have to actually change it manually, which is really dumb. I think they should fix that. And then it will be vastly better than Treasure Battle. Um, it does, however, have probably the best practice mode ever released for a fighting game. It's just so fully featured. It really needs a save state where you can save all your drills and options. That would be perfect. So so the problem is I'll set up like a training mode and then I'll go into an online match and uh, which you can obviously queue up while you're practicing, which is something I've been begging Namco for for years. I think it should be standard practice across all fighting games, especially looking at you, Mortal Kombat. But I would like you to be able to save your game state so you can set up drills practice a match and come back and keep running your drills while you wait for your next match. And a Street Fighter 6-esque battle lounge featuring customized MiiWi avatars for social purposes and matchmaking, if that's your thing. 
full character customization, but with a somewhat stripped down amount of options that has been the case since its peak in Tekken 6. And now even a jukebox mode um, with music customization with tracks spanning the entire series of games features most of them but strangely missing Ground Zero Funk and the intro music however, which is a bit odd. Um, however, you can fix that with mods and more on that in a second. And finally, a revolutionary replay feature, which not only allows you to review your last 100 matches, but also allows the game to offer you tips and even lets you take over the replay in real time and train and see what you could have done in that situation instead. I cannot emphasize enough how much of a game changer this is, and I would argue is way more useful than any tutorial could be for such a complex game such as Tekken, where often learning how to defend against a situation meant learning that character yourself to even work out what you just got blown up by. Now this is a thing of the past, and this needs to be a staple going forward. Overall, the only features that appeared to be missing was a team battle mode, which was hinted by the developers at a Tekken talk as being a potential free update, and Tekken Force, which does make a brief appearance in story mode. And I'm not going to mention Tekken Bowling since it seems to have been a total flop in the last game. So I think it must be said that in a genre which is famously anemic in its modern day offerings, Namco really outdone themselves to the point that this feels like the first time in years that a fighting game has been released that justifies the current inflated price of AAA video game offerings. Critics swooned and the game was met with almost universal acclaim, unless you read the Steam forums of course, and all seemed well in Tekken land as its competitors were laughed at for about a month, as we all know times can change so quickly in the world of video games. The murmurs of discontent began when it was found that Namco had completely failed to implement an automated system to punish malicious disconnectors, which promoted a toxic online environment full of cheaters and intentional disconnectors and rank boosters. When they found there was simply no repercussions for pulling the cable and such, much to the fury of legitimate players worldwide. I must say, to their credit, through this whole process, Namco have at least been, on the surface, very transparent with multiple developer discussions and patch notes with explanations on what they were changing and why, which is a breath of fresh air compared to how the likes of NRS have treated their online community. But then, when addressing this problem, Namco made it quite obvious that they had done nothing to implement a system to deal with this and expected the community to individually report perpetrators much to the exasperation of this community, claiming that they would be issuing bans and claiming legal difficulties in doing so, completely failing to acknowledge that no, almost no one actually wanted these players banned. We simply wanted our rank points for having our time wasted with the logical idea that if these players were punished in game for doing so, that it would completely disincentivize the whole practice. Then while everyone was still acclimating themselves to a new system that only saw a couple of weekends limited beta testing in stark contrast to the years in arcades these titles used to languish before finally getting to the home consoles where everyone got their hands on them and which also was widely regarded to be the most different game in the franchise since Tekken 4, a balanced nightmare of storm-like proportions was brewing. Then amongst the rumours that Bamco, after taking severe losses with their Brew Protocol game, which seems to have failed in the East, and were leaning on the Tekken team to add more monetization, it was announced a few weeks after release that they would be adding a shop featuring costumes and all the scummy premium currency business practices all these companies use in free-to-play games to psychologically trick you out of your money or more money than you need to spend for the item you want. Although, personally, I found the controversy about a lot of this to be a bit on the bemusing side, other than the premium currency crap. Because I had heard for years and years people screaming in Tekken 7 for extra customization DLC content to be obtainable, but make no mistake, their shady implementation of it is indefensible. 
But hey, I guess at least the price of the costumes themselves is pretty good compared to its competition. But then rumors started to emerge and then confirmed that Namco would now copyright strike YouTube channels of passionate content creators for showing cosmetic mods on their channel. And then the Tekken Mods website itself. This is deplorable at every level possible and done obviously because this shop exists. Bandai themselves have been completely silent on this issue and ironically it actually does nothing but make it even less likely that I'm, a, I'm going to give them any more money and I'm sure many people feel the same. This is just scumbaggery and an utterly shambolic situation. Yes, go after cheaters and people using hacks, but most of these mod websites are not doing that. Their customization that only factors goodwill and passion for your gaming products. Just absolutely out of touch and disgustingly dumb. Hey, I'm okay with the Tekken shop personally. I just hate the premium cash currency crap they pulled like, they, like all these companies do. Even a paid battle pass, like if it had decent content in it and it was worth the price of entry and it meant that they were continually offering free updates like they claim and supplying some decent content in the shop, would definitely urge everybody at this stage not to buy the premium pass, even if you're a content creator, because it's just not worth it. It seems Nanco are dead set on spending all the goodwill they have accumulated in the last game. And from it sounds like, I haven't been playing many of the Namco games recently, but it seems to be a problem that's spreading out across all of the company's franchises. It seems like the bean counters have really got their claws in. Now finally, a comment about the state of the balance on the game is required. Namco just released maybe the worst patch in tech in history in the last two weeks. I have no doubt this may be one of the hardest games to balance. There are 32 different characters with on an average of 100 moves each and far and above any other game in this regard. But this company has had an easy way out approach to some balancing decisions for some time now. They love to make system wide changes instead of focus targeting problematic characters, changes that often don't become apparent until people thoroughly test the game. Akuma was nerfed in Tekken 7 by the use of this method and it ended up actually being a buff to him. As Usaina's obnoxious while running 3-2 was on paper nerfed, until it was found it makes punishing her for using it gone from being just really hard to nigh impossible due to the existence of her back turn parry, while the rest of the car suffered from a system-wide nerf intending to tone down Devil Jin alone. Now stage interactions seem inconsistent to the untrained eye, making a hard game even harder to understand, and then we have the bugs, and there are many. At this point, I would like to remind everybody about the history of Tekken's balance. I wonder how many people were around for a decade that was Tekken 5 on console release, which enjoyed a relatively fast console port time, and was not fixed until the DR expansion, because back then there just was no such thing as online patching or the Tekken 4 debacle, which was never fixed at all. Pretty much every Tekken game, including 6 and 7, were a complete mess in their first iterations, and it seems we're living through the arcade testing phase now at home. Time will tell if the Tekken team are able to bring the ship around and become a babyface again. Seems like there's a balance patch uh, planned for Tuesday, a hotfix one, which reverts many of the changes that were put in in the last disaster patch which really starts making me worried it gives me nrs vibes where it seems like these changes are simply not tested properly or just simply not thought through please don't go this way namco don't make it i'm, I'm all for keeping your game updated but make sure you know it makes me wonder like some of the balanced decisions that are happening under murray's leadership um we've got homing throws which i think have no business being in the game um, and we've got things like Lars, like becoming completely Mr. Casino, where you, you, there's no counterplay, removing counterplay for 50-50 guessing games. Not even scissors, paper, rock, but just a clear guess. I mean, this is not what makes Tekken fans like Tekken. Of course, 50-50s and scissors, paper, rocks like mechanics have always been a part of fighting games, but there's always been educational guesses involved and counterplay 
And these are being seemingly removed from this new Tekken game at the expense of making it more accessible. And I think it's the wrong path to take. I still like the game and the franchise. It might be my favorite iteration of it. Um, although this is likely due to the overall package and being finally able to play online to a relatively user-friendly degree. I am from the arcade era and as a child my dream was to be able to play an arcade perfect version of Tekken at home against anyone in the world. And that's now almost a reality. But for now it seems a game lauded as the golden poster child of how to do things right for a modern fighting game has jumped face first into a volcano. And as a user of mods and cosmetic mods, for example, I've been replacing some of the music tracks in the jukebox mode, not even with other music, mainly with the music that is missing from the other games and the intros and such. It's Namco, your attacks on the modern community are disgraceful, only making longtime fans such as myself not want to support you any lo longer. You guys need to pull your head out of your collective asses about that. And also, we need a proper punishment for people that are cheating in the game because mods aren't cheating mods are a cosmetic one-sided affair that does not affect anybody else but the person playing the game you can't even see the cosmetic costumes that people are using if you face them because they just replace assets on the user's side that are already in the game and this practice does not even really interfere with your monetization of the shop for costumes the reason you want to buy a costume, official costume in the shop, is so you can show off your customizations to everyone you're playing against. This is not the case in a mod, so I don't see how this would eat into your revenue whatsoever. It's really depressing because I wanted to champion Namco in this game, but they seem to be going out of their way to become the villain that everyone will refuse to support. And all you're going to be doing is shooting yourself in the foot. That's it for now, I guess. And as I don't do the panhandling thing for likes or subscribers, but I will only say that the more that I do get of these things, the more frequent and higher level of time and effort I will be able to put into this channel going forward. So stay tuned for more content and Necropants signing out.